So a couple of months ago, I took a look at the alpha build of Metabox Builder version 5 and the key changes that brought with it, specifically moving over to a much more Gutenberg stroke WordPress native way of working. Whether you liked it or disliked it, well, that was kind of a personal preference. For me personally, I didn't think I would like it, but after testing it for a few moments, it made a lot of sense. But the beta version has now been released and that brings with it some additional changes and I want to cover that in this video. So I think we're relatively short because it's just covering those changes. But if you're a Metabox user, let me know what you think of these changes. Drop a comment down below. And if you're not a Metabox user, would these changes make you reevaluate that decision and maybe move over from a different solution? Again, let me know down below. So if you want to test this out for yourself, and you can do, I'll link the details down below. Please don't use this on a production site. This is still a beta race and therefore will probably contain bugs, quirks, and issues that you may have a problem with on a live site. Test it on a demo site only. So what you're going to need to do is install the normal version of Metabox and then upload the beta version of the Metabox Builder, and that will then overwrite the existing version with the updated beta release. I've already done that, and let's go and take a look at how things work. So the key changes are inside the custom field section, but I've already created a custom post type. If we take a quick look under the post type section, you'll see I've got agency and property. We're going to use the agency custom post type and I add in some additional custom fields. So to do that, we're going to come to the custom field section and inside there, we're going to add a new field group. First things first, let's give it a name. So the first thing you'll notice now is that inside here, that instead of the normal panel with all the set is being on the right hand side of our screen, so now over on the left hand side. You will also notice that everything is open by default. Previously, these were all closed up, which meant you had to open them to see what settings are inside there. And that could be a bit of a pain. This is now by default, everything is opened up, which makes a lot more sense for speeding up your workflow. So if we take a quick look through what exactly option wise do we have here? Well, everything you're probably used to, to be honest, is just looking a slightly different. First things first is our location, which obviously we can change between post types, taxonomies and so on. And then we've got by default connected up to our posts, which we don't want. We want to change that from here and set this to be our agency custom post type. Want to add any additional rules in? You can do. You can control the settings for where your content is after the content to the side, high, low, standard, seamless, those kind of things. Everything you're used to inside you. One thing I do really appreciate about Metabox is this option for custom table. This allows you to store the data we create inside these custom meta fields, not our custom post types, just our custom meta fields inside their own dedicated database table. Obviously, as you get lots more data, that's going to help speed up your website by reducing the cost of the WordPress native database setup. So I would recommend using that, especially if you have a site that you intend to grow with a lot of additional meta field data. All you need to do is select the option. You can then get it to auto create the table and give it a table name if you want to. So for example, let's say auto create the table. We'll say include prefix if you want to, and you can give it a name should you want to, however you want to operate with this. So we'll leave that set as it is. You can then come over and start adding your fields in. So this is where you're going to see the real change in how you have probably traditionally worked. If we click to add a field in, that'll open up a modal and show us all of the different field types we have supported inside Metabox. Alternatively, you can come out to the plus at the top here and all those same options are available. So let's say we want to do something simple like add a text field in, click add a text field in, job done. Select your text field. All the options now open up on the left hand side. You'll also notice at the top we've got required and clonable. So if you want to set those options, you can do that here. And clonable obviously comes with its own set of options. So we'll leave it set as required in this example. Now you can obviously set the label inside here, but one of the key changes that have come over to this from the alpha build is that you can now do these in line. You can edit it directly inside the interface, which for me personally, is a real nice little touch. I would love to see this expanded out to lots of other options, but you can simply click inside here and you can start editing. There you go. If you want to make changes, you can make them inside here or you can make them over the label section. It's entirely up to you. Little quality of life enhancements that just make working with this nice, quick and simple. So let's say, for example, now we want to add another field in. Let's go and add a field in and we'll say we want to use a WYSIWYG. We'll add that in. We'll say this is going to be the short description. And just not having to go back to these boxes, in my opinion, is just nice. It just kind of feels more akin to a desktop application, which I personally quite like. But obviously, you still have all those options on the left hand side, should you want to use them. And as you can see, you can go through and you can customize all this. You can show it in the admin column if you want to. So for example, if we select our name, 
say you want to have this in the admin column. You just select it. You can then apply any values to it, whether you want to be searchable, filterable, and so on. Again, these are little things that make your work so much more professional if you're actually handing this off to a client or if you're using it for yourself where you can sort and you can filter and things like that inside your custom post types, inside the custom meta fields you add into the normal WordPress post types, your pages, anything like that. Just makes everything contained inside one set of tools, which I do appreciate. So you can go through and you can start adding more options inside your, there's nothing really changed on the previous video and creating the different kind of field types is basically exactly the same as what you're already used to. It's just laid out slightly differently. So now we've seen how that works. Let's just publish this and let's just jump over and take a quick look at the options inside our database and see how the new database table has been added in. So now you can see there's our Metabox Agency Details field and any data we now create and save into those meta fields will be added into this database. So it gives us now a nice, simple way of having its own dedicated tables and not clogging up with thousands and thousands of records inside the normal database setup of WordPress. So those are fundamentally the key differences and changes that have been brought into this beta release. So as I said at the top of this video, let me have your thoughts on these key changes inside Metabox. Would you change over to it? Anything you like, dislike, let me know down below. And if you want to learn more about Metabox, you can check out this video next. As always, all applicable links down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.